everyone, and welcome to L Beauty Weekender presented by Tata Clique. I'm Sonakshi Sharma, L's beauty writer, and today we are in conversation with the beauty guru and founder of the iconic brand Paula's Choice, Paula Begun. Paula has written 24 books and has spent 40 years doing research on skincare ingredients and formulations. Hi, Paula. We are delighted to have you with us today. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Good, well, good evening and good morning for me. I'm in, uh, I'm in Seattle, Washington. Oh, great, so good morning. Thank you. Um, should we just jump right in then? I have a bunch of oh. questions to take you through. <laughs> yeah, love it, bring it on. Yes, I, I, I'm excited. I, I looked at some of your questions and I'm excited to, to uh, talk about it. Great, okay. So my first question to you is, Paula, how did you come up with the idea of the brand? What was the journey like? Could you tell us the inspiration behind Paula's Choice? So it was a long journey because I started out as a, actually as a makeup artist. That's how I sent myself through university. And I was majoring in science in university and had uh -huh. terrible acne. And every product I used as a teenager and in my 20s just made my skin worse. Didn't matter who, you know, dermatologists, drugstore, cosmetic spas, didn't matter. Made my mm -hmm. skin worse. And so I became obsessed with learning what worked and what didn't. And that just created a whole journey of wanting to understand skincare, wanting to not have bad skin. That's all I wanted. So in uh, 1984, I wrote my first book. And then wow. I became kind of well known for a book called Don't Go to the Cosmetics Counter Without Me. And basically what I did was review thousands of products, you know, the ingredient lists became legal, mandatory in the United States. That was a huge deal in the 80s. And uh -huh. I started learning what, what made sense, what didn't, skin physiology. And in 1993, I got all this feedback from my readers and friends and family. And, you know, you always say, this is good, but this is bad, don't. And mm -hmm. they said, why don't you just make your own products? You know, we can't take your book to the cosmetics counter. We, you know, some of the books are, are there behind me. One of them was 1400 pages. We can't oh my take God. that with, with us. It's, it, you know, that's just absurd. So, um, that's when the idea of doing my own product line, Paula's Choice Skincare, came up. And so it launched on the internet in 1995. And here we are. I didn't stop writing books. I thought I would stop writing books, but I love the information. I love the research. I love formulating products. So being an internet company lets me eas relatively easily do it all. I think that is remarkable i mean you've taken your own personal experiences and then you've put it into something so fruitful and something that's going to help so many people you know across the world because i know that the brand is so successful and uh, in terms of the skincare and the formulations it's kind of become a big deal you know it's kind of become like a conscious effort to look at the look at that and you know look at what you're applying onto your face it is it's i i still think there's a lot of insanity out there the, the myths in the industry and the craziness about information still abounds, but mm -hmm. that women want to know. I think we've always wanted to know. And yeah. now that we globally have cosmetic ingredients, it's a little easier, but mm -hmm. it, it's still, it's rocket science. Skin is rocket science. It's complicated. I spend, mm -hmm. to this day, I spend most of my time doing research and studies are very hard to read and understand. And often they're taken out of context, but, mm -hmm. and if you don't have a science, but even with my science background, there are still some very complicated studies that I have to turn to my, you know, my biochemist you know, associates who know those things better than I do to say, what the hell is this? I don't, what is this saying? So, um, but it's, it's my passion, it's my mission and that it's gone global over the past 40 years kind of uh, astounds me. And I keep thinking, you know, cause I see how crazy it can still be out there. And I, I keep thinking I want to get another job, but I'm 
I'm 68 and clearly I haven't gotten another job. So <laughs> and I've for a very long time. Uh, so here we are. Right. So you said that there are certain, you know, times when you consult your biochemists and the research team that you have, because it's so extensive, it's complicated, it's rocket science. But in that way, you've spent like years and years trying to perfect it, right? You've been at it for a long time. And we know that you're also referred to as the cosmetics cop. So how do you feel about that? Do you have, do you have? Well, that name came to me from Oprah Winfrey when I went on her show. I did her show several times um, and she actually gave me that handle. So that, that's just been, that's been with me since the eighties. When I first did her show, I think it was in, well, I did her show many times in the eighties and nineties. Um, uh -huh. So we were in the green room all together. This is when she, she wasn't that, it wasn't like she is today. It was when she was a smaller celebrity and we're all in the green room together and she's asking me about my books and what I do. She says, well, you're kind of like the cosmetics cop then. I said, yeah, wow, that's really good alliteration. Yeah, I guess I'm like the cosmetics cop and it, it just stuck. And it is, it's what I do. I've been, you know, this is crazy. This isn't, this works, this doesn't don't do this. This is not good. This, this right. makes science sense. This is published research. This mm -hmm. is nutsy. <laughs> so yeah, it's what I've been doing all along. So I love it. I, and I'm very flattered to have kept it for so long. I love that. I, I had no idea that this came from Oprah because wherever you try to, you know, you listen to it and everybody knows that you are the cosmetics cop, but I had absolutely no clue. So I guess mm -hmm. a lot of people are in for a little bit of a treat when they get to know about this. It's I'm just flattered. Show. I feel like that's such a, such a fun thing to say. And it's just, you know, Oprah's that kind of personality. When she says those things, they just click, right? And this is probably one of those times when it's just stuck for a long time. That's so interesting. Um, long time. Long time. <laughs> right. Um, in terms of beauty, so I wanted to ask you, you know, the past year has been so many things for so many of us. There's been grief, there's been loss, there's been so much happening in the world. And in terms of our personal lives and our homes, the biggest shift that I think in, the, in terms of the beauty industry that has come is that shift from skin, from makeup to skincare. Because the focus is now entirely on skincare, right? Because we're all indoors, we're not leaving our homes as often as we used to. And we're just shifting towards that. So do you think this is sort of like a global trend that's going to stick for a while? Or is it something that should have happened a long time ago? Because like you said, ingredients and what you put on your face is so clu so crucial that sometimes it just, it has to be the prime focus of what you're putting on your skin. Well, skincare should be the prime focus of what you do. It's like, it's like eating. You can get dressed up fancy to go to a restaurant, but the food you're going to eat is more important than the clothes you're going to wear. I mean, it doesn't matter. Well, I mean, some restaurants won't let you in unless, you know, but you're dressed yeah. up fancy, but it's the same concept. Nothing matters, but mm -hmm. the, the health of your skin. Skin's a, the largest organ of the body. And research mm -hmm. is incredibly clear that not only what you do to your skin, the health of your skin, not only affects how it looks and how healthy it's going to be, but it also affects your internal organs. In other words, right. let's take sun damage, for example. If you uh -huh. don't protect your skin from the sun, research has shown that that actually can cause damage inside right. your body, not just mm -hmm. on the outside. So mm -hmm. we know that what you do to your skin not only affects your skin, affects inside. So what you don't do is as important as what you do. Makeup is just getting dressed. So I, you know, I barely got out of my pajamas for a year. There was no place to go. Exactly. So the United States is 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 pretty much open, particularly Washington State where I live. We uh, ha we've achieved about eighty percent va vaccination, so it's very open. Uh -huh. So I'm getting dressed more. I'm wearing makeup more, but that's just getting dressed, putting on makeup. Mm -hmm. That doesn't change. Like I said, eating healthy doesn't change. You know, taking care of your skin, skincare. So 
whether you wear makeup or not is irrelevant. If you're wearing makeup more because you're going out more, you're not wearing makeup, doesn't matter. What matters always, every day of your life, from the day you're born, is how you take care of your skin. Nothing is as important in terms of how you're gonna look on the outside. And now we know from current research how it's gonna affect you on the inside. I think that makes so much sense because in terms of all your work at Paula's Choice and all, uh, and this entire shift that's come from makeup to skincare, that is so key because I think personally for me as well, growing up, like I was like, okay, you know what? Skincare is fine. As, as I mean, if you want to go out, you can apply a bit of makeup, but that's about it. But I think the past year and a half has been so introspective in that sense that you're indoors and you're taking care of your skin and you start noticing these things and you're, you know, you're making a conscious effort to better it. Right. I promise you will go back to makeup as soon as this insanity is over and you can get back outside. But now, hopefully, what you've achieved is a better balance where you're not relying on makeup you're relying mm -hmm. on the bigger picture. So you're not just getting dressed, you're also thinking, uh, covering up your outside. You're mm -hmm. thinking about what you're, you know, I always associate makeup and skincare to getting dressed and eating. One doesn't, you don't go out, you know, you don't, you know, when you start using skincare, you don't, you're not naked. You don't, I mean, you, when you're eating, you don't have to be naked. It, they they right. can go together, taking care of your skin and wearing makeup. It doesn't have to be all or nothing. So yes, if this time period made you more aware of taking care of your skin, mm -hmm. that's great. But mm -hmm. the goal is to have a balance. When you get back yeah. outside, I don't want people giving up if they have really found a way to take great care of their skin. I don't want them giving up taking great care of their skin. I think that's that's wise words because you you rightly pointed out that as soon as if we went outside, everyone would just switch back to makeup like crazy. But hopefully that they can find those parallel lines and figure out that you know what, take them together. They don't yeah. have to be like Venn diagrams. They just they just need to go together. <laughs> exactly. It's a balance. It's a balance. Exactly. Exactly. Great. Okay. So my next thought would would be that, what about sustainability? So the beauty industry is, you know, it's constantly evolving. There's so much humdrum about uh, beauty pollution, the climate change and the crisis that's happening across the world. And beauty obviously contributes to it in a massive sense, right? We're contributing to air pollution. We're also contributing to, you know, plastic, et cetera. So do you think that the beauty industry should step up, take its ownership and try to better themselves as, you know, people who are creating that depletion in the environment? What, what's your take oh, on that? I mean, there's no question. I mean, of course, we all do. The whole, you know, all 7 billion of us do. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, but the beauty industry isn't massive doing it. We're not big enough. There's, there's I mean, we don't have to go down Other that factors. road. There, there's lots of really bad pollution out there. But yes, you know, everybody, everybody absolutely has to play a part. You have to be conscious from a, a, a formulator's point of view, a manufacturer's point of view, mm -hmm. as to what you're doing in terms of what you're putting into the environment. Absolutely, mm -hmm. there is no question about how important that is. But the beauty industry is not massively polluting. It's just not a big enough industry and it's not a big enough contributor in terms of yeah, it's we're just we're not we're not one of the worst industries. So you can feel no for sure, no for sure. I completely yes. Agree. In terms of in terms of uh, responsibility, yeah, the whole world has to take responsibility, which includes mm -hmm. the beauty industry, hair care, right. skin care, you know, manicure, pedicures, whatever you're doing. Yes, um, right. you have to take responsibility. There's no question about it. It's crucial. no, yeah. I mean, you you pointed out correctly. Um, you can't really single out these things, right? You can't lose context. Or you can't isolate a factor and then say that, you know, there's just one thing that's doing it. So there has right. to be, there's a right. bunch of things. I mean, the earth is run by hundreds and thousands of things. So we can't just say that it's just one industry doing it, but you've, you've answered it, but I'm just saying that, yes, we play a part in it. That was the kind of sense yeah. of it. So yeah, absolutely, absolutely agree with you that responsibility should be taken. And we have to be conscious. But let me also qualify that by saying, when it comes to skincare, it's just like healthcare. Uh -huh. um, I, there are in 
ingredients that the this kind of moves into the natural organic craziness uh-huh and the notion that natural ingredients are better than than the ones that are created in a laboratory mm-hmm. the the craziness about that is if there there are not the in, it's not that there aren't good ingredients or great ingredients in the world of natural straight up natural mm-hmm. ingredients mm-hmm. but the range of effective ingredients that are manufactured in a lab if we gave those up out of fear unfounded not substantiated by the research fear that they're not natural so they aren't good or good for your skin or good for the environment you would be hurting your skin because the research mm-hmm. makes it clear that there are so many brilliant ingredients that are manufactured in a lab that mm-hmm. are brilliant. you can't really take care of your for, for example sunscreen there's no such yeah. thing as a natural sunscreen doesn't yeah. exist if you don't use sunscreen you are sacrificing the health of your outer skin and your body because sun damage is terrible sun damage right. is terrible and it not only ages skin it triggers all kinds of skin disease and skin concerns and we know now that it damages inside the body too so right. i don't want this fear or this concern about the environment sacrificing what we know really helps and cures not cures but really controls and diminishes certain things about skin that are important to us just like uh, antibiotics if an antibiotics or an antiviral drug helps us uh, it's synthetic i don't want you not taking that drug if it's going to help you no i agree with you i can make sure that I... okay so i just want to be clear that there in terms oh, for sure of... i think Sorry to, sorry to interrupt you. No, I think I completely agree with you because you've pointed out something that is so key in the debate that's, you know, constantly going around with uh, with ingredients that are natural and that are synthetic or artificial because it's pro- it's a proven fact now that not everything natural is going to be great and not everything artificial is going to be great. Again, there's a fine line of balance between what you're using and what you're applying onto your skin. So I think the pages, the 1400 pages of your books are going to be very, very interesting here. because that's going to oh, just bring it's, 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 it, the book is now i mean the book is now online on uh, uh-huh. on beautypedia.com and paula's choice uh uh .com also has a lot of articles and the research we've accumulated we always whenever we write anything by the way if, if you visit the website you'll see that all of the uh information any article we write we always include the published research we use to create how we've come to our conclusions we never just state anything we okay. always source our information but yes it's it's not that there aren't great natural ingredients it's just that there are really brilliant lab engineered ingredients that uh-huh. your sunscreen acne rosacea i mean i could go on and on you just all natural and all organic is not going to help your skin it's it's going to cause it's going to cause problems one of the biggest ones just as an example is mm-hmm. essential oils and most right. natural organic products mm-hmm. are loaded loaded with essential oils loaded Mm-hmm. and i know sandalwood and i know i'm pissing <laughs> off a ton of indians out there but it's the research you know if the research didn't say it i'm i'm just the messenger and it mm-hmm. is very clear that essential oils they're volatile oils and they cause irritation they cause mm-hmm. inflammation everything mm-hmm. about skin everything about mm-hmm. aging everything about disease is about inflammation Mm-hmm. anything that inflames the skin is bad for skin that's it that's it i can't do anything about that not my fault don't blame me essential oils and they radiate that now it's not that they don't have some good properties they do mm-hmm. but they carry with them inflammation mm-hmm. there are brilliant plant oils out there mm-hmm. that are not essential oils that 
can be used and, do, and have benefit, antioxidant benefit, hydrating benefit, soothing benefit that don't carry inflammation with them. Mm -hmm. Use those. Don't use the ones that, <laughs> that burn skin, that inflame skin. That's just crazy. Don't do that. So, okay. I'm, I'll I think, stop. no, no, I, stop I could, that. no, no, no. That was essential. I think if you get it, that was essential. Is that a bad joke? I did the pun. No, I, did, I, got, no, I, got, I thought that was good. I'll use it. It is essential. Not to no, it. it is essential because people need to understand the fact that, again, everything is only all right or only fine with moderation. You can't just, you know, outright. No, 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 no. It's not about moderation. No, not even essential oils. What it's if you dilute them? Fun. There is no, so you, there's no moderation in using bad things. There's okay. No, it's not, it's not like a little piece of chocolate cake every now and then. Uh huh. Or, I mean, it's like, the way we use skincare, mm -hmm. we use skincare every day. Mm -hmm. And you can't put essential oils and inflame your skin every day. Mm -hmm. You can't, mm -hmm. if you get a little bit of sun, you are getting a little bit of aging. I mean, the, the accumulation of damage mm -hmm. adds up to you looking a lot older and risking your body's health and your skin health over time. There isn't mm -hmm. a moderation when it comes to doing good things to your skin. I don't want you mm -hmm. ever doing anything bad to your skin. There's no reason for it. It's like okay. punching yourself in the face. Oh, mm -hmm. oh, look how nice and rosy and red it made my skin. Oh, look, I look so, oh, look, a little blush. I look a little, I look a little, uh, you know, rosier. Yeah, well, uh -huh. I just punched you in the face and wounded you and I don't, want anyone doing anything bad not even there's no such thing of moderation especially when to do something bad especially mm -hmm. when so many good things you can be doing why do anything bad i agree with you okay so we're just gonna leave essential oils apart we're not gonna touch them to make, well there's a lot of other things but yeah essential exactly oils are essentially going but away right now. yes absolutely moving on from essential oils my my, another thought was, what about representation? So beauty industry is increasingly, you know, including if it's about um, textures or tinted, you know, sunscreens or everything that's that's tinted in terms of race, the color that we have. Like we know that Indian skin is different in terms of um, Western skin in that sense. So the ingredients are adapting to that in a certain way, right? Because the melatonin differs in, in our skins. Other than that, Gender in itself is such a big construct that plays within the beauty industry because we always we talk about these things that oh you know um, makeup is only for women and men can't use it but again and again I think the world has come to a place where we're breaking those stereotypes and we're embracing everything men are wearing all kinds of makeup in fact sometimes as daughters or as wives uh, women are also stealing skincare from you know from their brothers or it's the other way around most of the times actually because I have brothers who steal stuff from my skincare cabinets. So, I mean, the, from your, from the man in your life's skincare, because those are some of the worst products. No, yeah, um, that's why I, I, yeah, I know, because I men's skin's going to be a little bit harsher. Also, because people who have beard, even them, because it, it differs in that sense, right? Because they have a different set of skincare concerns then. But the, the whole idea that race and gender are embedded within beauty, what's your take on that? Do you think that we're, we've come well, to a place where we're accepting of it? Well, let's, let's put makeup over there because whether okay. somebody wears makeup or not i could care less i uh -huh. somebody wants orange hair or brown hair or i don't know khaki hair i don't i whatever somebody wants to do as long as it's healthy and good and doesn't hurt anybody i'm i'm fine I, and makeup usually washes off so really i could care mm -hmm. less you're in a mood go for it the mm -hmm. in terms of skincare skincare is raceless and genderless. Mm -hmm. um, the only thing that, skin is skin, right? Skin, like I said, is the largest organ of the body. Mm -hmm. And just like when it comes to your heart or your liver or your stomach, you don't, you're, I, you, like when you, like if you are going to go get a checkup, you don't go like, uh, doctor, do you, what, you know, I have, I'm having heart problems. Do you know about Indian hearts? 
who, who mm-hmm. says that? What do you know about Indian livers versus mm-hmm. white people's livers? And by the way, a lot of white Indians, a lot of Asian Indians, you guys are all over the place in terms of race and color. And it's it's a very multi, you're, you know, you're very huge range of people in India. Uh-huh. It's one of the more wonderful things. Um, mm-hmm. One of the things I love about the country. Um, so skin is skin and there is no research showing that skincare differs by race or gender. There's mm-hmm. a couple of things around having beards, which really mm-hmm. only applies to some, you know, men and women, some women who might have hair problems. Um, mm-hmm. But it doesn't apply for a lot of Asian, East Asian men who have almost no body hair. So it, mm-hmm. it varies sometimes if somebody has a beard and then that kind of changes skincare to some extent. Mm-hmm. But when it comes to acne, rosacea, oily skin, dry skin, um, uh, dehydrated skin, um, uh, you know, on and on and on in terms mm-hmm. of you know, wrinkles and sagging, skin is skin. And there is no research showing that race or gender plays a role in what works to address the issues of skincare. It mm-hmm. is genderless and it is raceless. Mm-hmm. So, so you're saying that these factors in skincare do not make a difference. It, it doesn't matter what ethnicity or race you are and it doesn't matter what gender you are except the beard part, but skincare is universal and everyone can use it. So it, it boils down to then those specific if categories, you, right? If you have acne, the ingredients uh-huh. that work for acne work if you're African, if you're, you know, a brown skin Indian, if you're East mm-hmm. Asian, mm-hmm. if you're Caucasian, Northern European. Uh-huh. There's no research showing there's a difference. Same thing I, for That makes things so much easier for everyone, don't you think? Because then wherever in the world you are and you know what you're suffering from, as long as you know what's going on with you and you know what skin type you have, you're good to go. You can find it everywhere. You can find whatever you want off the counter or with prescription if it's something severe. And skincare kind of works for everyone in that sense. It does. It does. Again, the only uh, gender difference is, uh, well, and it's not necessarily gender because, you know, females can struggle with excess hair on the face. But beards, Mm -hmm. which are very specifically for some men intense, then, like I said, that's a difference. And that has some specific skincare, you know, Mm -hmm. when it comes to shaving. But yeah, skin is skin. It's, you know, just like- That's my biggest takeaway, I guess. A liver is a liver, yes. Right, that's my biggest takeaway, I guess, skin is skin. So we're just gonna leave it at that. Um, Now I have a couple of quick questions for you um, in terms of any, sorry? I'll try to be quick. It's not my strong point to be quick, but I'll no, try. That's not, I just meant like um, in terms of busting skincare myths. So are there certain skincare myths that you hear often and you feel like absolutely wrong? No, don't listen to that. Don't stick to that. And I already know one, essential oils. I've noted that one. So anything else? Well, Please the second one that you already know is natural isn't better than uh-huh. lab engineered ingredients. That's for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, Oh God, there's so many. Packaging matters. Jar packaging is bad for skincare. Mm-hmm. Doesn't keep the important ingredients stable. Um, mm-hmm. Stability is a very big issue in terms of making sure that the ingredients you want get to your skin. And mm-hmm. jars, when you take the lid off, they uh, are exposed to air and exposed to the bacteria when you stick your finger in the jar and those beautiful ingredients start <laughs> deteriorating. There are superhero ingredients that are important for skin. There really, really are. And those ingredients can do incredible things uh, for skin. Uh, That is really true. What isn't true is that not everything that is claimed to be a miracle is a miracle. Mm -hmm. So there are (laughs) incredible claims around ingredients that are just nutsy. So... Mm -hmm. There are ingredients that can do wonderful things, but if it sounds over the top, if it's scientific mumbo jumbo, Uh like just, you know, like you're lost, you don't even know what they're saying and you're just going, Uh 
<laughs> yeah, then they're lying and you walk, you walk away. Um, uh, oh gosh, there's so much. Retinol is a great ingredient for skin. I don't know how this myth about retinol being bad showed up. It's one of the most long-standing ingredients in the cosmetics industry. It's been around for over researched for over 50, 60 years. Um, that was actually it, my next question, retinol, but you answered it right there. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, depending on uh, how advanced problems you have. Um, mm -hmm. Acne, wrinkles, you might want to use higher concentrations versus lower concentrations. Some people mm -hmm. are sensitized to retinol, just like you can be sensitized to any skincare ingredient. So mm -hmm. not everybody can use it. So that's true but it's not true for everybody it's a small percentage of the population that somehow that got blown up that it's and then what came up which always happens in the industry is they make an ingredient bad and then they say oh look here's a natural one that is better and it replaces retinol yeah it doesn't replace retinol retinol is a very unique ingredient it is natural in skin it is a cell communicating ingredient Mm -hmm. it's it's incredible um uh i know one of the questions you asked me about uh uh, uh that's in your list was diy do it yourself ingredients yep D diy should be di don't uh, oh okay don't, okay don't do it. <laughs> actually what don't do it yourself diy should be don't do it yourself okay there's nothing in your kitchen that's could, that, uh, other than maybe if you have very dry skin, if you have olive oil or safflower oil or some other, mm -hmm. plant, you know, oil that you use for cooking, that can be good for skin. Other than that, there is nothing you can make, nothing you can make in your kitchen that mm -hmm. is good for skin. It's not small enough to get into skin to make uh -huh. a difference. Most of it is irritating, particularly the citruses. Mm -hmm. uh, the yogurt, in terms of being told it does something to the microbiome, milk is actually irritating on skin when it's just in its natural form like that. And uh -huh. again, you, balancing the microbiome is too long a discussion. That's mm -hmm. kind of a myth. You really can't balance your microbiome, but that's too long a road uh -huh. to go down. Um, everybody, let's see, I would love to talk about, I want to talk about it all. Okay, well, never mind. I think uh, we're going to, we're going to have to do like a couple more sessions to talk about everything. <laughs> we're going to have to sit down and we're going to have like heated conversations about this. And yeah, I'm going to go home learning so much. The microbiome phrase just drove me nuts. I mean, it just, I mean, <laughs> it's not that the microbiome isn't important, but the claims companies were making around it is just crazy. Just crazy. Uh -huh. So I was coming to the next one. You actually answered pretty much all of it, but I had a couple more. So I wanted to ask you, is there one specific skincare ingredient that you would say is absolutely important? Just one, if you could pick one. No, I wouldn't. No? Let me put it to you this way. So I just said skin yeah. is the largest organ of the body. Uh-huh. So, uh, and has very complicated, complex needs. Is right. there one food that you must eat versus any other food? What's the most important? You're asking me basically this question, right? What is yeah, the one food you should eat? That's interesting. Well, I have no answer. You're absolutely right. You can't pick one. Because if you only ate one food, you would yeah. become malnutritioned and die. <laughs> and that wouldn't be pretty. Skin is a very complicated organ. With uh -huh. incredibly complicated needs and different mm -hmm. layers that have different needs. Again, look, don't blame it on me. I'm just no, 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 no. Really, no, my life would have. I wouldn't. I wouldn't have had to have formulated all those products and written all those books if it was easy. But the truth is, is skin is complicated, and depending on what you're trying to address, the uh -huh. different needs of skin. And uh -huh. which ranges from cleansing to sun protection to pollution protection. And then mm -hmm. if you have skin disorders like acne or rosacea or, you know, on and on. Right. So then we couldn't pick one. It's absolutely, it, it, it doesn't, I think that question the, then is just null and void because you, you've put it absolutely accurately that if I were to ask you to pick one food, what would you do? You wouldn't because you can't do that. 
So I think oh, there's a lot to learn from this. You would die. <laughs> I don't want you dying. And I want your skin. You know, I, you know, it's funny. People often uh, say to me, uh, you know, at this age now, what do you wish you could tell your younger self? Uh -huh. And I'm thinking, well, first of all, I would be an obnoxious teenager and I wouldn't listen to me anyways because teenagers don't necessarily listen. But mm -hmm. what I wish is I wish I had known about not irritating my skin and I wish mm -hmm. I had known about sun protection. Mm -hmm. And I wish I had this, this issue of inflammation is so significant, mm -hmm. you know, uh, you know, the world wasn't as polluted when I was young. So it's not quite the issue it is today. But mm -hmm. I think that when you take care of your skin, mm -hmm. some of what we're doing is trying to undo all of the accumulated pollution damage, right. skin damage, and all of the inflammation we've caused our skin because we used irritating skincare products, we over scrubbed our skin, we used hot water, we, you know, so a lot of skincare is about repairing, mm -hmm. not only preventing mm -hmm. and maintenance, but for a lot of us, depending on how old you are, is about repairing. So it mm -hmm. also depends what stage you're at. Mm -hmm. So, I would, I wish I could have told myself, and I'm looking at that adorable face of yours, and I know you're young enough, that if you start now, mm -hmm. really now, and it's hard when you do your job, mm -hmm. you're tempted and you get all those products in the mail. And, yep. and you'll, get my, you'll get my products in the mail. And I don't <laughs> even, and I, I know, I hope nobody from Paula's Choice is listening, because I'm going to say, I don't want you to use everything that comes. Not that I... I mean, believe me, I don't put fragrance and irritating ingredients in my products, but not everything I, I'm, I'll send you is for your skin type. Skin, yep. Your skin type. I don't want you using everything that gets sent your way. So mm -hmm. um, I guess what I'm saying is that if you start now doing everything we've talked about, mm -hmm. and you're my age, you'll look younger than everyone around you. And you'll say, well, uh -huh. I talked to this crazy woman so many years <laughs> ago. And she said, and, you, and you'll be the young one in the crowd. Absolutely won't use the word crazy. Would definitely use something like a legend or something like a cosmetic cop. But I would never say crazy. I think this conversation has been so woke, if I may. Um, but it's been so interesting and thank you so much Paula I've learned so much from you today I felt like if we were in the same room I'd probably hug you right now but like you know from a distance because the situation we're in but thank you so much for your time it's so been you'll, such you'll a big get, you'll get to the states we're, we're hugging here again oh you know I'm hopping on the next flight then I'm gonna see you in like 16 hours <laughs> <laughs> thank you sweetie have a lovely day thank you so much okay. for being with us today and I hope everyone's had a lovely time listening to us and thank you for watching guys signing off